Prefi Radio, this is Chiara Nicoletti from the 15th edition of Rome Film Festival. I'm with Thomas Winterberg, M- Matt Mikkelsen, Magnus Milang. I hope I pronounce it right. Maunus. Oh, Magnus. Maunus. Maunus. Yes. Okay. Manolo. <laughs> Manolo. Manolo. <laughs> Who are here as director and protagonist of another round uh, screening here in the official selection. So here's a question for all of you. Is there such a thing as the midlife crisis, a moment in our life in which we need to like shake things up a little bit? Well, I think hopefully the movie is about more than just a midlife crisis. I think we can all, in all ages above 20, feel that life becomes repetitive, monotonous and too safe. Uh, You know, I have a very young wife and if I look into her her friends and their sex lives and their marriages, they experience crisis as well. They experience boredom and lack of curiosity as well. Uh, So narrowing it down to a midlife crisis would be uh, too small, I think. Well, it definitely exists, and as Thomas just said, uh, it can happen at any time. I mean, maybe not when you're very young, because that's just that's a highway of life ahead of you. You don't care. 30 is just a number. 40 is just a number. 50 is a bigger number, and it's kind of halfway through. <laughs> you, start, you start looking at, okay, what's left? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? But to turn it into a crisis is not a necessity. You can also look at it and say, okay, let's move on. Manolo? Yes. <laughs> well, my character is about 40, and um, his crisis is more that it's repetitive with the small kids, and uh, you find yourself being an extra in your own life. And that can also be sort of a crisis where you need to fill yourself up with lots of alcohol. <laughs> I, I was reading the director's note that, and you wrote, uh, this is an homage to the alcohol's ability to set us free. And I was thinking that, uh, uh, do you think that, that at some point we should all find our way to, let's say, deal with um, losing control a little bit and get it back? I mean, that's. Right. I, the film is about more than alcohol. It's, um, it's exactly about losing control. It's about the uncontrollable, as, as it's being called. It's about allowing yourself that risk in life of letting life decide. Instead of trying to control everything, plan everything, measure everything, let it happen to you. Uh, and uh, I guess this what's, that's what they do these four men. They impose risk in their life, and they reawaken from it. Uh, what I liked about uh, uh, Thomas' uh, films is that he never judges uh, the characters, and this helps us, the audience, to feel empathetic and really relate <coughs> to the characters, to get them to get uh, in their shoes mm-hmm. in a way. So I, w- I was wondering, what's your approach? At do you feel that when you're shooting? And yeah, I mean, I, I agree. He doesn't uh, judge his characters. And I, I, I should say that that should be a rule number one for every director. Yeah. Um, but it's obviously it's lovely that we, we are there to defend our characters. That's what we do. Uh, uh, and, um, and then the story will take them a certain way. And, and people will leave the, the, uh, this, the, the movie theater with an idea of who they were. And of course, in the end of the day, he will manipulate some kind of morality into it. But just you know, deciding from the beginning, we like or we don't like a character, that, that is a no-go. Yeah, otherwise we wouldn't like the film if we don't like the characters yeah. ourselves. Mor- moral obligations is not necessarily very creative. We're, we're just exploring. And uh, we're doing it as, as best as we can but we are trying desperately to avoid moral obligations, political dilemmas, uh, gender debates. Uh, This is a study of human beings. I totally agree. You know, I was reading some uh, film reviews of your films, and I have to say that uh, one was saying that uh, there is a more 
realistic slow and subtle way of uh, the characters getting into the alcohol loop you know mm -hmm. and getting, to getting into the alcohol loop you know or the, mm -hmm. and uh, this felt uh, a bit like Le Grand Boeuf mm -hmm. you know uh, so I was wondering what are your um, what's your references in this term and if you think that there's a it was also compared to American films. There are more flashing. Some, so do you feel there's a our European way of doing things? Maybe a little bit of Italian as well. Well, we were definitely inspired by Le Grand Bouffe. Le Grand Bouffe. Uh, and Matt claims that there's something Italian about this movie, and I think and I hope he's right. Some of my heroes, greatest heroes, are Italian: Pasolini, Fellini. Uh, I, I think Eight and a Half is a complete masterpiece. You know, these movies are possibly somewhere in my system and, and to be recognized on the screen, I don't know. We also looked at Husbands by Cassavetes. Mm -hmm. uh, and Fight Club, actually. Uh, but not for so long. <laughs> So, Matt, agree? Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I agree. I mean, I, I wasn't part of that process, obviously, but the reason why I said that, that it was his most Italian film is that, well, some of his films are always about life to a certain degree, and this is even more so about embracing life and the present. Uh, but, but there's something, it doesn't matter how dark, how brutal an Italian film gets, you kind of leave the movie theater with a feeling of of life. There's always life in there that makes you somehow not cry but s to a certain degree smile when you leave the theater. And that's what I think he did. And I promise you, we don't say the same thing in Sweden yeah. or in France or Norway. No, yeah, this is his <laughs> most <laughs> Swedish film. This is film. not a traveling gimmick. <laughs> uh, Wallace think uh, once I uh, heard that the best movies uh, are the ones with the musical number for apparently no reason at all. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, is that why I don't want to spoil too much, but there are some very good dance moves. <laughs> well, that sounds slightly speculative. <laughs> the, you know, the ending of this movie, we don't want to spoil too yeah. much, is um, a liberation of a character and an attempt to create ecstasy, because that's what you can do with alcohol. You can create weightlessness and ecstasy, and even group ecstasy. <laughs> And uh, that's an amazing thing when it happens. And hopefully, with the help of Mats Mikkelsen, uh, we succeed by in doing that at the end of our movie. The famous dance moves that you already add. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't really add to that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, we, 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 we didn't approach it as that. We approached it as a, uh, the mood what was going on inside of this character at this point? I mean, he just lost something, he just gained something. At the same time, he wants to fly, he also wants to drown. And that's what we are trying to achieve. Is that, we, in this sense, there's a, a in, let's say, an open ending, can we say that? Like, the life is dead, like that. Well, I think that he's flying in a positive way. <laughs> but, flying yeah. girl, but, but it might be open, <laughs> not to me. Well, you know, it is open. He can fly, he can fall, but I agree with Manolo next to me. <laughs> I, I want him to fly, and that's why I think he's flying. Uh, but I'm not the one who's deciding. If, if there's like 360 people, or 200, as in Italy, 200 people in the, in the cinema, there should be 200 different films being watched uh, and 200 different solutions. I totally agree with that, and that's what I love about cinema, so let's leave it like that. Thank you so much, Thomas Pinter, Thank you. Matt Mikkelsen, Manolo si. Milang, Maunus. for being with us and talking about another round screening at the uh, 15th edition of Rome Film Festival in the official selection, and this is Chiara Nicoletti for Fred, the Festival Insider.